Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Today is weekly Arizona recap on the Arizona real estate market. And what a week it has been, especially for interest rates. And it's interesting, they took a quite the jump up this week. Now, for those that were predicting that we'd be in the mid fives, um, it kind of shows the danger of predicting out too far. Because you can look at all the charts you want. You can listen to what the central bank says they're going to do. But you get a country like Iran that lobs 300 missiles and drones towards Israel, and it throws everything into a tizzy. And the bond market does not like uncertainty. And along with uncertainty, we end up with higher rates. Where is this going to go? How long are we going to stay there? Nobody knows. There's a lot of, uh, it's awful quiet out there in YouTube land, isn't it? <laughs> Marry the house, date the rate. Probably didn't work out so well. Now, you've heard me talk that I do not mind the 2 1 buy down if a seller pays for it. And you know that it on year three, what your payment's going to be, and you've qualified for that. I don't have a problem with that. But I have a problem with purchasing with the full knowledge of in yourself as saying, well, if I buy now, I can refinance next year. You don't know that. So if you don't know that, don't do it. Look what happened to oil this week. Actually, since February, take a look at the price of oil, almost $90 a gallon. And our mortgages right now sitting there at 7.43 on a national average. You can, of course, get lower rates depending on uh, what you're looking for, what your credit score is. Um, so if you're out looking for a mortgage, make sure that you uh, get a hold of your favorite mortgage broker and see what it is. Don't just dig along online because you'll see all kinds of numbers. Now, it didn't really affect us that much, though. Especially when I look at our seven-day moving average. Yeah, we did see a downturn here um, of some contracts, but we kind of had a relatively high week just a few days ago of 3,300 3, units, and now we're down to about 3,200. Relatively speaking, that's higher than certainly where we've been. And new listings went down a little bit, kind of started to come up. There's no panic in our market. So <clears throat> we did not see a huge reaction in the Arizona real estate market right now with rates going up this week where well, they did, which is interesting when you go look back at when rates first jumped up to seven and a half percent, the wheels fell off the wagon. But here's where we're at when we're looking at today with our Cromford index. This is a supply index, this one here, and it's in the green. It's saying, you know, it's still relatively normal to low 71.5 if it's in the red that means there's too much supply the market index is right there at 111 kind of balanced so it's neither up nor down and it's been this way for a long time and demand of course is down but it's not down way down here it's just off of that 100 level and if i click on that to see where it's trending you can see here in the demand side it's flat and it has been flat for a long long time as an index so this did not rattle our market here in arizona i look at notice of trustee sales by month those foreclosures that are supposed to be coming that there's going to be thousands and thousands of them here's a notice of a trustee sale this week and we have 194 now keep in mind most of those notices of trustee sales right now are being gobbled up by buyers or investors. They never make it to the uh, to the auction. So foreclosures, uh, keep waiting. They're not there. They're not there yet. And what's surprising, and uh, Jessica, she had a uh, listing she was going after this week for one of our clients. And uh, she wrote an offer, and it was in Chandler. Nice house, but it needed a new roof. And they had seven offers. I mean, Wait, I thought real estate was dead. This week, she had seven offers on that house. Wasn't her listing. Uh, we didn't get it because we asked for some concessions for the roof. Um, but here's closings over list price. So we're up to 17% now. We went up 1% versus last week. We were at 16%, 2% versus two weeks before. It's not a huge amount. So even though we're seeing that, it's averaging about 5,000. You recall the day when it was averaging about 10 we're not seeing that yet. And so also what we're not seeing is a lot of activity with iBuyers. One in particular 
is in trouble, has already been ordered to pay $62 million in refunds to sellers deceived by online real estate listing service, Open Door Labs. So they said that they could get more selling to them than they could any other way. And it turns out that probably wasn't the case. And it was convincing enough to where it went to court. And they got slapped with $62 million. Now, I don't know what year that was they were looking at because we went through a period where they were overpaying like crazy. And now they're not doing much at all here in the Valley. If you look here, they've got February quarter one. They've only sold 63 homes. They peaked out here in March of 2022 at 625. They went from a market share, and I'll, I'll say combined, so like Offerpad, Open Door, and Redfin was doing a little, not too much. They were 6% of our total market at one time. And now they're not even two. They're about 1.5%. And we're not seeing it, uh, we're not seeing it growing. So they didn't make money when real estate was going crazy, and they're certainly not making money now. So in the industry, we're watching it going, we're still waiting to see what your game plan is here. Let me know. Um, they're, they're nice folks. Uh, I've, I've uh, helped buyers buy open door homes. They're very easy to work for. I have nothing against them. I just scratch my head at the model and going, hmm. When are you going to make some money out there? Here's our active listings. And again, a slight uptick, <coughs> maybe 150 homes, nothing to write home about. Speaking of writing home, Arizona is still crying over the loss of our hockey team. I think I showed you last week or a week and a half ago, this huge arena that they wanted to build in, North, build in North Scottsdale. And the mayor of Scottsdale said, nope, I don't want you to build that here. So farewell to the desert. Coyotes' potential finale in Arizona draws emotions and memories. They are going to Salt Lake City. So now we wait and see how long it takes Salt Lake City to build a new stadium and get a new team. Does that mean we're not going to have a hockey team here next year? I'm afraid that is what it means. And I say I'm afraid. Honestly, I've watched one hockey game since I've lived here. So it's not a big deal to me, but it is a big deal to a lot of people. Looking at next week, we don't have a whole lot of data coming up and uh, any turmoil that's expected to hit the market. But I think if there's one thing we learned, um, you know, the Fed didn't do anything. The Fed finally came out at the end of the week and spoke and said, well, we're seeing some numbers that looks like it's going to make it harder to lower rates the rest of the year. And that dashed the hopes of a lot of people. That's what pushed us up partially to 7.5%, but mostly it was the turmoil that did that. So we went from Fed meetings and actions to now just Fed speak. The Fed speaks, the market moves, and it's getting a little jittery out there. Will we hit 8%? I don't know. Um, it's not, uh, it's not stalling the market. It is in some areas. Uh, one of our subscribers, Jason here, it's up in the Pacific Northwest. He sent me a message and said that their inventory is growing up there like crazy. So it is hitting some parts of the market. We'll can sit, we'll watch here in Arizona and see what happens until then. Stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Have a great rest of the week. Take care.